Well, hey, Gundam Maniacs, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. In this episode, I want to talk about a side story from a video game that is not really talked about often in just Gundam conversations online where people talk about like how the games add some side stories to the Universal Century timeline, like specifically during that 0079 era. Now, this is the Wii game, the Mobile Suit Gundam 0079 uh, MS Sensen uh, on the Wii, and I did a look of it because I was trying to emulate it on the PC using a gyro controller to get the motion controls. And while the game is cool on its own, I'm always interested in the stories that it's telling. I, this is the cover, uh, if you can see that, of the, the game where it's it's really just showing uh, the Arc 78 2 and Char um, or in his Zaku 2. So it does, that doesn't even really say anything about this story or plot but then when you open the game up actually and yeah sorry for the uh the brightness oh that looks good though um you can actually see that there's a cast of characters here and this is federation characters and not only that but there's also uh zeon characters here so then i'm thinking okay with all those characters in there and i think they're nicely drawn i really like the art style there's got to be a story, some more to like the Gundam lore. But do we even really need that? So this came out in 2009 and there have been more side stories told since then. Uh, but sometimes you think, man, there's so many side stories during that timeline. Do we need it? And yeah, I, I think it's fine. And actually, I found something that connects them. And I'll get to that, too, by the end. So first off, for the ROM itself, there is a hack that allows some English translation. Not everything, but some of it. I actually haven't been able to get through all of it yet. And again, there's like cutscenes that have I have been translated yet and I'd like to get that done too to get a whole sense of the story like this I'm Corporal Hoa Blanchett and I'm the units operator I collect analyze and communicate information so that you can concentrate on the battle I'll do my best so that's cool that that's been translated um, but again it'd be good to go through and get everything to get the whole story because I want to do a video on the whole story but for this we're going to look at SRT unit one so there's a lot of information here, and I wanted to call it out because basically this is a new type of unit, or not a new unit, but a unit within the Gundam Universal Century Lord. It's not talked about too much, and it has these characters. So yeah, this is, yeah, let's jump into it, actually. All right, SRT Unit 1, Special Response Team Unit 1, uh, was an experimental mobile suit unit of the Earth Federation forces during the One Year War. It served as the player team for the Federation story in Mobile Suit Gundam MS Sense in 0079. So really cool, we see this logo here that they have, EFF, SRT, Earth Federation Force, showing one of the carriers uh, just flying around a globe. Okay, purpose, mobile suit team, led by Alain Aylward. Uh, I might need to work on that. It seems like that's actually uh, pretty decent for a, uh, a Gundam character name, not too crazy, not there yet, I can't pronounce it. All right, they're first seen in September 26, 0079 until December. So this takes place like right before Requiem for Vengeance starts. Um, and and I think it has to do with like all the fronts, pretty much the Federation's reclaiming back on Earth and there's, there's few Zeon um, remnants out there, not even remnants yet, still trying to hold the line. Okay, formerly known as Wide Area Special Response Mobile Suit Team Unit 1, SRT Unit 1 was one of the many experimental units created by General Revel. In addition to data collection relating to the use of mobile suits, as with the other experimental units, SRT Unit 1 was intended to travel around the world, assisting friendly forces wherever and whenever a need arises. That sounds pretty badass for a uh, mobile suit team, especially seeing that carrier that makes more sense. A special unit team during the end of the one-year war that would fly around the globe helping out wherever. That's pretty cool. On September 26, Alain Aylward. Having passed the qualification test for mobile suit pilots and graduated from military academy, was assigned to the unit. Unit 1 received his first mission October 6th, the same day as Garma Zabi's funeral broadcast. Ironically, the location of this mission was the ruins of Seattle, exactly where Garma died. Though the area was of low strategic value, it was noted to be close to the California base, so the team was ordered to conduct recon on the ruins in addition to mobile suit data collection. While in Seattle, the team encountered multiple MSO-6 J Zaku-2 ground type, including three Zakus dropped by a passing Ga. However, since Zeon was mostly still unaware that the Federation now possessed mobile suits, they were caught off guard and easily destroyed. Their next mission was in the Gobi Desert, where they were uh, asked to demonstrate the effectiveness of mobile suits and the experience of the team by assaulting a small Zeon mobile suit unit in preparation for Operation Odessa. So within this uh, SRT unit, we have, again, Alain Aylward, which has his own wiki information. Dennis Burrow, Lil Summers, sounds like a rapper, and Hoa Blanchett. Um, so here's another 
quick look. Um, and I know this is this is so small. I'll have to link this below. I do like this anime style design. So what this was 2009, 2010, I think it was around that time. Uh, does anyone out there that's more familiar with anime than I am know like what the style is based on? There's there's a little more to it. There's always interesting, like the way Zeta was drawn versus the way Thunderbolt is drawn versus the way uh, Seed is drawn, you know, with the lack of noses and giant eyes. I, I'm curious about this style because I like this. And I think you see, other than oh, 08MS Team, sorry, you see does a good job of keeping consistent Normal looking faces. Okay, for this character, Alain Alward. So he's the, the second lieutenant. Okay, that's not too high up. But sometimes I look at their ages 20 and it's like, what are they actually doing in this war? Like, but that's kind of the story of Gundam anyway. And I kind of like that where you kind of realize some of these people that are having to make tougher decisions within a battle, uh, you know, within the war are like very, very young. So Allen graduated from the military academy with good grades and was appointed to his post. He has excellent command and MS piloting skills as well as good intuition and insight, but is often underestimated as lacking command skills due to his baby base. Now that's that's interesting. Um, I because I think I've gone through life where d during certain jobs people have totally underestimated me because I look younger than I am. I'm, by the time of making this, I am 40, um, but I do get, I've all, all through my life, I've gotten that. So it's kind of cool. There's something with this character I can relate to. You know, and, and the other thing is too, I was thinking, you know, with the age, and, and it reminds me of today, like with my kids, how much more they can do at their age versus what I was doing at their age in some aspects. Um, and I think that that speaks actually to the sci-fi narrative, the story that's going on here in the future of humanity. I, I do see that there is some aspects of age and uh, expectations changing. The ability to maybe strategically fight in a war might be able to happen earlier in life than in what we see in kind of modern times or even before that where there was less technology. It was just throwing people on the front lines to fight. But now we have, you know, in the Gundam universe, technology that allows, you know, like Amuro. It was because of his skills, uh, his gadgetry and electronics that allowed him to get to where he was. Same with Camille. So I think that's very interesting. It's, it's as generations evolve and there's more opportunity and more things you can learn and access to education that it may get people jump started in this stuff early or it's simply due to um, so many people dying <laughs> that there's not many people that they can use to fight. All right. And something I wanted to, to speak on here real quick is because, again, sometimes we get where we have all of these side stories, whether it's from PS2 games, Dreamcast games, uh, stories told in manga. And sometimes it's like, man, that's crazy. Like so much has happened during that time frame. I don't really understand how it's connected. And there was this line I saw. Now, this is from the Alma uh, Sterner wiki, a character uh, from the no nosy, uh, noisy uh, fairy game um, that, you know, it was the game. And there's a story. It's a side story. It has to do with California base. So Sterner and the rest of Noisy Fairy would then join other last out Xeon Special Forces, including the Midnight Fenrir Corps, the 5th Terrestrial Mobile Division, and Blower Team. So this Blower or Blogger, B-L-A-U-G-H-E-R, I'll figure that out once I get to that video. Um, that's the opposing, like the Xeon team. So within this story, there's, you know, the, the SRT unit, which this video is about, and then the Blower or Blogger team. But what it has done here in context is kind of explain, yes, there's all these like squads, divisions, uh, cores that are out there at different parts of the world during this battle. Um, but kind of putting it in context where you see what each one was needing to do, it kind of then makes more sense in my head when you think of the size of a squad in a lot of these stories versus size of armies that are usually put out there even in modern times. This, this is, I don't know if I'm making sense, but this is kind of helping me really understand. In fact, that might be something we could cover here where we go through each of the side stories um, where that squad was, what their purpose was, and how it relates to everyone else, even the Xeon side. So the other thing was the name of the game, because that's the issue with the name of this game. It doesn't give itself its identity for its story for this SRT team. And looking up Sensen, uh, it means front. I even saw battle line. So yeah, there's line, wire, beam. So I guess unless someone has already done this, I'm going to say let's call this side story um, battle line. 
uh, mobile suit gun and battle line. And I guess that could make sense for what was going on in that time period anyway, because you had this sort of uh, these opposing fronts were really up to their lines. Uh, if you think about it for that time in the the war on Earth, because it was really slowly Xeon um, encampments were getting eroded away. Areas that they had once taken over were getting eroded away. They weren't expecting the Federation to have the mobile suits. So they get their mobile suits, the front line, wherever they can on Earth to help out pushing the Xeon's lines back. So, yeah, let's call this uh, mobile suit gun and battle lines. I don't know. Let me know what you think below about that. But anyway, that's about it for this video. I wanted to talk about this neat SRT unit, SRT unit one. It's a team not talked about too much. It has a whole cast of characters that I still, sorry, there's a lot of glare there, that I still need to research and learn because there's some cool looking characters. You know, we've got uh, a Christina McKenzie type over there, but it's always cool to learn about these new characters and even how they could be used in future stories. But anyway, let me know what you think. Do you actually have any more information about the story of this game? If so, leave it in the comments below because I kind of want to collect and put together just more we can put out there as reference to understanding this neat side story that we don't know too much about. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the supporters for making this possible. So yeah, check the links in the description for ways you can support the channel if you're into that. But we also have a Discord. You can join there. A lot of cool people there. But until next time, we'll talk later.